Hello dear friends, welcome to another video of the Never Do Through the Wii, what you can do through the CLI channel. I am Vangelis and today we will be exploring Web API Benchmarking, Python Fast API vs Rust Warp. Uh, first comment is that today I will be using Warp, warp because uh, as we saw in the benchmark between them, the performance is comparable plus warp uses less memory in the wrk um, benchmark so i will be using uh, these tools warp and actix web interchangeably in the videos today we will be using warp uh, plus uh, the creator of warp is uh, a friend of mine so i want to pay some tribute and some kudos to him so uh, let's get into the video. Uh, these are our APIs. This is the fast uh, Python fast API and this is uh, the warp API. But before we start into benching, I want to show you how I run uh, the fast API application. According to the docs, they describe here how you can run it. And uh, I'm using uh, the Uvicorn uh, program, this fast uh, server, uh, Lightning fast uh, server build, uh, etc. I installed it like this to give us the extra boost that it is described here. And in essence, this is how I run the application. There are more details about uh, here about replication processes and memory, about multiple processes, etc. But of course, I did not go into setting up multiple processes or workers because in any case, uh, the Rust uh, application also uses only one process. So we don't have multiple processes there. So we will be comparing a single Python process and a single Rust process and see how it goes. Uh, hopefully, I do not do any major mistakes in this benchmark, but if I do, the Python users can pinpoint any possible mistakes in order to uh, correct them. And after this preface, we are ready to get into the benchmarking. This is our uh, API. If you want me to kill it, uh, sorry, here we are. I just killed the API and this is how we run it, as you can see with this program. So we run it and we have our API again. So I'm ready. I suppose I'm ready to bench. Let me prepare these two here and we will start with the Apache Bench 5000 requests 1000 concurrent requests so start and let's see how it goes uh, let's see our resources here Uvicorn, CPU 6% currently, uh, memory 67 megabytes. The resources are quite low as you can see. The resources consumption is quite low, but at the same time the throughput is not great either. As you can see here we have the API info, you, we see it live here. So we are about to finish here. Okay, we have our result. Let me bring this here and let's bench the warp API. We are done already. 
<laughs> I didn't have the chance to bring up the resources anyway. So let's compare these results initially and then we will proceed to the WRK. <clears throat> hmm. oh, users, here we are. Here we are, okay. Ah, oh, sorry. Time taken for test 65. Time taken for test 0 0.3 seconds. Completely, complete request 5000. Complete request 5000. Failed request 0. Request per second 76. Request per second 15,000. Time per request uh, 13,000 uh, 13, milliseconds. That's very interesting. 13 seconds. Seems so. No. This must be... Uh, yeah, it's the mean time, yes. Yes, it's the mean time, so 13 seconds per request is the mean time, correct. Transfer rate, uh, 7,900 kilobytes per second. Transfer, uh, we didn't see it here, yeah. Here we have 65 uh, milliseconds. Transfer rate, uh, 7,900. Transfer rate, 1,500,000 kilobytes and this uh, one uh, you see the results across the board we have a huge jump here as you can see uh, some requests needed a huge amount of time the, these uh, stats are very interesting, so interesting and so bad, I would say, that I cannot really interpret why they are so bad, to tell you the truth. But you see uh, the huge difference between the systems. I will run one more uh, run here, just to be sure. I know it will add some time to the video, but I want to be sure that we have comparable results, uh, that the results will not fluctuate, this is what I mean, because we want to have a solid uh, conclusion from the video. So, yeah, whoever is interested can spend the time and see the results. If you're not interested, you are free to go, of course. I'm using only 5,000 requests in order to shorten the time needed for the benchmark, as you can understand. For other frameworks, I was using 50,000 requests, requests, but yeah, 50,000 requests for Python are is a very big number. We have results. And let me rerun these two. Okay, we have the results too. Let's see again 5000 requests per second 75. The, the previous was 76, so we have a comparable result. The results time per request 13 seconds. Let's see our latest. The same, 13 seconds, as you can see. No, sorry. Yeah, here we are, 13 seconds again. Transfer rate the same. We had uh, 7,900, 7,800 now. And these are, again, comparable. Let's see the previous ones. You see, they are quite, quite comparable. So this is not a uh, something you know 
Uh, a look, let's say, but uh, the stats from the fast API framework are uh, the same for the two runs. So we are pretty confident that they are that, I wouldn't say bad because I don't want to offend anybody. I would say non-efficient, hugely non-efficient. And at the same time, you see the stats by Rust warp uh, part in particular. So let's proceed to the WRK uh, bench. Uh, this is what we will do. Six threads, 1000 concurrent and 30 seconds for uh, fast API. Let's start and let's bring this up. Of course, I completely understand in the context of not wanting to offend anybody that Python has its usage. Uh, Rust is not uh, suitable for any kind, for everything, let's say, even though, okay, we have our result. Let me bring this here uh, and let's go for for warp we didn't see the processes here uh, for the fast API but in any case from the diagram you see that the performance is lower again so what I want to say is that uh, Python has its place its usage uh, Rust is not for everything it's not the magic let's say solution to everything but i think that the information that we gather from these benchmarks shows some useful info regarding the orders orders of magnitude that, of difference that exists between the two frameworks and especially for applications that uh, expect heavy load or are mission critical let's say like banking, for example, or other life systems, uh, you can see how important it is to use uh, a safe and uh, efficient language. Plus, if you want to cut down your costs uh, with these uh, cloud providers, of course. So let's check this touch too. Let me zoom in, okay. 30 seconds, yes, uh, latency 1.29 seconds, latency 56 milliseconds, the max was 2 seconds here, and the max was 30 milliseconds here, request per second uh, 16.92, so 17 requests per second, with a max of 90 requests per second, uh, 3,190 uh, 3, 3, uh, with max 4,000 requests per second. Total requests uh, 2,300. Total requests 500,000 571,106 uh, 234 megabytes read 56.8 gigabytes read request per second 77 request per second 19,000 transfer per second 7.78 megabytes transfer per second 1.9 1, 1 gigabytes yeah, uh, these are also huge differences. Uh, again, Python is not an efficient solution if you are looking for efficiency. It is a solution that provides uh, uh, a fast uh, development cycle, of course. And you can use it if that makes sense to you. But, uh, you know, the the core 
concept of these videos are to compare these tools. It's not to say that one is better and the other is worse. It's just comparing, gathering data, and then everybody can make up his own mind regarding what tool he will uh, choose to perform his task. So this is the information that I wanted to share in this video. I hope you like it. I hope it's useful to you. Um, thank you for watching. Have a, a great day and also have a very nice holiday uh, for everybody that is celebrating uh, Christmas and whatever else. So bye.